Welcome to the Brothers in Crime podcast. We are brothers. We talk about true crime. We don't take ourselves too seriously. And you shouldn't either. So Father's Day was a few days ago. And for this episode, I thought it would be fun if we talked about some cases that involve fathers. So like dads getting honored as like fathers of the year with awards and having happy times with their sons and daughters, or, or what are you thinking? Something like that, but okay. more brothers in crime style. Oh, sure. So I'll give you an example, and then we'll see what you can come up with. In uh, Polk County, Florida. Oh, we're going to Florida. This should be good. We are, but it's Polk County, so they have Sheriff Grady Judd. Have, oh. Have you ever seen any of his press conferences? <laughs> I haven't, but I, Polk County, Florida, and Sheriff Grady Judd, did I hear you right? <laughs> He is fantastic. I mean, it sounds great. This is going to be good. Like, I think if every county had a Sheriff Grady Judd, we'd all be better off. Sheriff Grady Judd has lived there forever. He knows everybody in the county. He goes and has, like, his breakfast or lunch or whatever at the same diner every day. He's a predictable fellow, but what he does that makes him really stand out is that he frequently holds press conferences. When there's a crime and he's after somebody or there's been an arrest... He comes and he brings pictures. Oh. And he doesn't care if they're minors or not. Okay. He, he doesn't play by this. We won't release the names of these suspects or arrestees because they are children. He goes by the, if you're big enough to play adult games, you're big enough to win adult prizes. Okay. All and right. he feels like the community needs to know who these scumbags are. Okay. And he will not hesitate to say when the parents aren't doing their job either. So his press conferences are a hoot. Okay. So <laughs> not, not to steal any of his words, but you get some Judd-isms in there, uh, and he just tells it like it is. It's pretty funny. So this story, case, whatever that you're about to tell us about came from a Judd press conference, I take it? Yes. Okay. I mean, he's not ignorant, but he just doesn't buy the PC. Can't he's putting it out there. Anybody. Right. The facts are the facts, and he'll tell you, you know, this is terrible. People are dying in our community. Hmm. Why are we going to sugarcoat this? Yeah, so whatever he thinks, he's going to say it. Yeah, I'm okay. not. that's not a quote, by the way. That's just my take home from him. Okay. So this happened in September. I don't remember exactly what day, but it, it involves actually three generations of Radas, okay. R-O-D-D-A. So you got Grandpa Rada, whose name is Thomas, and then you have Stephen Thomas, who goes by Thomas. He's 37. And then you have the youngest, Rada, who is Stephen Lee Rada. Oh, my gosh. And he is 16. Okay. So, yeah, names are, are difficult. So, we got grand, Grandpa, Dad, and Son. Because you, 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 I think you just said Thomas three times, so that's not going to work. Right, right. Yeah, they, they, they share a lot of the same. I don't know how they keep things straight. In that well, one of them probably there. goes by, like, Quentin or something. So, right. Yeah. Right. The grandpa of this, he lives in his mobile home there in Lake Wales, Florida, and his wife is in rehab. Grandma's in rehab. That happens. So the, the youngin, the 16-year-old, had been staying with him while Grandma's in rehab. He's been staying with Grandpa and sort of, you know, helping, okay. helping out. Looking with out things. after his granddad. Right. Okay. Right. So one day, Grandpa goes to visit Grandma in rehab. Which is probably a nursing home. Oh, I was. You said rehab, and my mind immediately went to drug rehab. So. No, 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 no. I, I get the. I got the. I got the. It says rehab, but I got the impression it's like physical rehabilitation. I could be wrong. That makes a lot more sense. So just to be clear, we don't know if it was physical drug or whatever, but she's in some sort of rehabilitation program. Right. Okay. I, I, I mean, you pick, guys. She could be at Betty Ford, but I tend to think it was probably a, a physical type of thing okay that makes a lot more sense but my mind just went to grandma had a pill problem so so he's he's gone off to see grandma at rehab whatever that is and then when he gets home about 11 o'clock in the morning his son so the 16 year old's dad okay. meets him outside of the mobile home okay and he says to his father i wouldn't go in there if i was you i killed somebody you may need to call the police. <laughs> you may need to call the police. Well, you may. Just maybe. You may. How do you feel about living with a dead body? Because if you're okay with it, you don't need to call the police. 
So, all right. What does Grandpa do? He goes in. Oh yeah. L- like any of us uh, would. That makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I guess some people probably would just go call the police. I know me. I'm going in. Well, I'm wondering if he's goofing, because I mean, I don't know if we know, but you know, like if you told me like you don't want to go in there, there's a body in there, I probably wouldn't believe you to be honest with you. I'd be like, whatever, he's being dumb. Right. And but there are occasions too where even though I didn't believe you, like I'm not going in because I want to see what's going on, but I'm like, you're full of crap. I got to pee. I'm going in. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Get the hell out of my way. Yeah. Anyway, so Grandpa goes on in the house, and he finds the grandson dead. And it turns out that... that wait, the, wait, wait. So time out. So grandson, meaning the, so the father who just told his dad, Grandpa, don't go in there. I killed somebody. You may need to call the police. Yeah, You may need him. to call the police. So he now what Grandpa finds is his son's son essentially yeah his grandson that's been staying with him his 16 year old grandson is finds dead. him dead and not just dead like i mean dead is bad and dead for a kid is bad any way you slice it but we're not talking about a even a clean death here you just said any way you slice it i can't believe you said that i was foreshadowing <laughs> but it doesn't work if you point it out uh, i don't know uh... Sorry, you can just edit that part out. Sorry. The way the 37-year-old allegedly killed his 16-year-old son was with an angle grinder. Oh, my gosh. And the scene was, in fact, as horrific, gory, and bloody as we're imagining. Uh, At least that's what Sheriff Judd told us, that it it was bad. So this is inside the house with an angle grinder. Yeah, in a, in a mobile home, so... There's not a lot... Yeah, I mean, this isn't a 20,000 square foot mansion where you might be, you know, 30 feet from the wall. Like, I imagine there's... This is a messy. And to explain to you that Sheriff Judd is, um, you know, when I say he's he's real, like, you know, he's, he's real people and down to earth, but he's also not an idiot, mm-hmm. is what he said there was... Uh, one of his statements was, it breaks our heart. There aren't adequate words to explain how horrific this event is. So, you know, there wasn't any, you know, references to Jim Bob and, you know, any weird country stuff, which I don't mind anyway, but, yeah. you, you know, he understands. So the kid, the 16-year-old, he was a junior in high school, went to Frostproof High, and according to other Fro- friends... Frostproof, like... Yeah, everything in Florida is Frostproof, I'd so say, that's kind of silly. Isn't that just like high school, high school, or like Florida high school? But they have weird names for things they down do, there. They do frostproof high school. That is, isn't there a winter something down there? Yeah, there's some odd stuff, and well, there's lots of odd stuff in Florida. It's Florida, so I was hoping you were gonna. And I'm sorry I interrupted because you're telling us about this this young young Thomas, and um, I think that's important that we learn a little bit about him at least. So yeah, well, the Stephen, not well, young Thomas, the younger Thomas, Stephen Thomas is the father of the 37 year old oh. that killed. Stephen Lee, who is the 16-year-old. Sorry, Stephen. I apologize. So, yes, Stephen. And so, I, don't, I don't know what he went by. Stephen, Lee, Ste- S.L. Stevie. But yeah, who knows? Yeah. But he was a junior in high school. His family said he was working on becoming an electrician. That's where he wanted to end up. Mm. But in the meantime, he had gotten himself a job at the Burger King so that he could make some money to buy a car. Hmm. So, Been I mean, there, done that. Yeah, right? He's he's on the right track. You make it your way or their way and until you can go get the big electrician money. So we got any idea why Dad, you know, like flew off the handle and angle grindered his son to death? That's awful. I mean, do, do they have any guess on, like, what motivates you to do that? The, the last report that I saw was they really didn't have a motive. They were trying to... Hmm. Well, it was under investigation, okay. which means somewhere between we have no clue and we haven't confirmed. Sure. Uh, he Sheriff Judd did say that the elder Stephen, who would be the suspect, the, the dad of the 16-year-old, had an extensive criminal history. He had an outstanding warrant in South Carolina at the time of the murder. And according to the family, they said that the killer has used meth since high school. Wait, and- meth? Since high school. Meth. So he's so 20 been years. 20 plus two, years. Two decades of meth. It's shocking that someone's alive after 20 years of meth well, use. Hashtag Florida man. But right. I, I want to back up for a second. So it just, it dawned on me that we might have some listeners who hear angle grinder and have no idea what that is. So one, do we know if this is a pneumatic or electric angle grinder? And two, you want to 
explain for the fine folks out there in listener land what an angle grinder is, what it looks like, how big it is, and what you would typically use it for, not not murder? Well, an angle grinder is best at cutting your fingers off because many of the idiots, self-included, who use an angle grinder don't necessarily follow the right safety precautions. So it's a power tool, and it really doesn't matter anymore whether they're battery, electric, or pneumatic because they're all pretty daggone powerful. If you imagine like a, I don't know, a tumbler, a, a water tumbler or something, mm-hmm. but at the end of it, it has a spinning wheel that's yeah, four or six inches around. can be bigger, but... I, I think I would describe it, it kind of looks like a, like a CD, if you remember CDs, but it's just thick and it's a saw blade. Right. And it's used for cutting metal. It does a damn good job of cutting through metal and anything else you put in its way. You can put a grinding wheel on there too and use it for grinding things like metal. So skin and bones are not a problem for this particular device. Yeah, to Bob's point, I mean, I've used one of those and it it really, it goes through metal like butter. So I can't even imagine, like this 100% is the kind of thing that if you're not careful, you will will absolutely just cut your fingers off like they might as well be uh, softened butter out of the fridge. I don't know how, it's curious, like, how did he get to the kid? I was thinking the same thing, like... With an angle grinder, without the kid, just bolting. Right, or fighting him. But again, if Dad's, you know, all high, hopped up on meth, Well, uh, the family also said that Dad had, uh, I guess, based on his meth use, or, I don't know, maybe separately, has had some psychotic episodes. You don't say. So, I, I don't, there, I can't think of any other explanation for killing your 16 year old kid with an angle grinder it's just insanity yeah so this first case that you brought up um i'm just you know there's not gonna be a father of the year award for that guy you don't think so no i think i think that he's gonna be in the runner-up position i gotta tell you one more thing that sure if you can't tell i'm a big fan of sheriff judd you got a little bromance with him i can tell that i i I do love the guy if you ever get a chance to watch one of his press conferences I, i highly encourage it one more thing that he said, and he was talking about the younger of the Radas, the, the one that died. He said he was a stand-up, stellar young man. Our prayers are with the family, and I want you to know that the world lost a great young man today. Mm. And that matters because if this kid was, not that he deserved to die either way, but if this kid was trouble and ended up because of a high-risk lifestyle being in a situation that put him in danger, Sheriff Judd would not have said such kind words. Mm. That means this really was a good kid. A- again, not that not that a troubled kid deserves to be, you know... angle grinder to death? No, by right. no means. Right, right. But it, it, just for Judd to say that, it means an awful lot. I got gotcha. you. It speaks highly of, of this young guy that was lost too soon's character. Right. That's a shame. Well, do uh, you have a contender for Father of the Year? Uh, you know, we're gonna take a uh, a trip up from what was it Polk County, Florida? Is that where we just were? Yes. And we are going to head up to Kentucky, and I don't. I think this is in <laughs> Lexington, if I remember correctly. I think it's the Lexington Police Department that was involved with this case. Is Lexington? Is that where they make that Kentucky jelly? I keep hearing about. You know, um, I'll be happy to talk with you about that later. So I tried it once. I couldn't get it to stay on the toast. Just slid right off. I bet it did. I bet it did. Uh, so this case, um, you know, I've got some headlines from some local newspapers, but people also covered it shortly after it came out. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'll just give you the headline. It says, man allegedly kills son on Father's Day as anguished mom writes, I need to wake up from this nightmare. Uh-oh. What did he do? Did he? Let me guess. The son gave him one of those stupid greatest dad ever T-shirts for Father's Day. I, he just couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, maybe, maybe it was a maybe it was a tie that just didn't work. This guy, I mean, I, so I'm pulling his picture up now. We'll, we'll we'll post it out there at the stories. You can see it. Whatever. Why are his eyes like four inches back in his head? I had so many thoughts when I saw his picture. Like one, this is the if you've ever been accosted for money outside of Seven Eleven, this guy asked you for it. And two, it looks like. Um, if Elliot Stabler from SVU had done way too much drugs and had no teeth, it's this guy. What do yeah, you think? Yeah, I think so. I'm just thinking, like, if he laid down, you could probably get six ounces of water in each one of his eye areas there. They're very sunken in. That's that's a fair point. Yeah, so we're talking about uh, James Hendren, who 
murdered his son on Father's Day. And this was back in 2018. And so I'll get to why we're talking about a case from 2018 here in a moment. Well, hell, we talk about cases from 1918. Well, it's 2018, but uh, the, the, the sentencing just occurred. Well, I should say the trial. The trial just occurred in February of 2024. No, there... There's that efficient justice courtesy of lawyers. Yeah, bingo. I think one of the most helpful kind of just how what went down here, and I wasn't there, but according to the, the young fellow who died, his brother posted and the Lexington Herald leader reported that his brother, the brother of the young man who died, said, and his name was Austin, the, so the son who this guy killed, said as Austin was trying to walk away, his dad went to grab his gun, chased Austin to the car, and shot him five times. Took his own son's life on Father's Day. I don't know what kind of person could do that. Someone who has rarely been visible most of our life took my brother away in a matter of seconds. I love you, bro. Rest in paradise. So, obviously, just crazy circumstances. Is- uh, is that the son, that picture there? Yeah, this is the son. And the police, you know, they were called out and they found Austin just lying in the driveway, suffering from gunshot wounds. And my understanding is that this was after... Uh, so so this dude who looks like the cracked out 7-Eleven guy who asked you for money called Austin's mom. And I'm trying to find the quote because I remember reading this and I thought it was absolutely crazy. Daddy O makes a phone call to to the mama, and I'm guessing mom and dad aren't together anymore. Yeah, that's that was my takeaway from it too. I mean, the son doesn't look much like the dad to me. Uh, uh-uh, no, no, son looks like you know uh, any guy that you'd see on a college campus. A I healthy, thought. normal guy. I don't know. I'd, I'd sort of wonder maybe maybe that was part of the issue. Is he don't he don't look nothing like dad? <laughs> maybe. Okay, here's the quote. So. This is from the Lexington Herald leader, and it's uh, I think this is the prosecutors talking about the case, and they say, the jury believed that the defendant went outside and chased his son out of his house and shot him three times, killed him, then went back inside the house and called the victim's mother and told her to come get her son because he had shot him. Wow. So not only did he shoot his son on Father's Day, but then he called mom and said, hey, I uh, just shot your kid. He's laying in the driveway bleeding. You should come get him. Wow. And who's going to clean up my driveway? (laughs) Right. Exactly. And in this case, you know, the jury, like I said, in 2024, that's when the trial happened. The jury did convict him, uh, James Harvey Hendren Jr., who is 51. So this is this is not some young guy. I mean, he's old enough to know better, to know better. Exactly. Uh, And my understanding is the jury deliberated for only about four and a half hours before convicting him. And um and they, we don't have a reason that he did it because he claimed self-defense. Say it again. I'm sorry. We don't know why he did it because he's claiming it was self-defense. Yeah, which apparently, you know, he made some comments in the aftermath, you know, initially being picked up by the cops or whatever, like, yeah, I shot him. And then, and then you know, once the lawyers got involved, kind of took the tack of like, oh, it was self-defense. But, you know, chasing him out in the driveway, shooting him. My understanding was one of the times he was shot was in his back. So... A little hard to argue self-defense when when you're getting shot in the back. I think it was the chest, so he must have been facing him. And then it sounded like, and I'm kind of piecing this together based on the things I've read. So chest, back, and leg. So it sounds like he got shot once, either in the leg or the chest. And then there was some, some, at some point, he got shot in the back as well, in this man's driveway. So in addition to convicting uh, the dad for this murder... The jury also recommended that he serve a life sentence, and his son was 23. Austin was 23 at the time that that he was murdered. And the prosecutor noted that they didn't even ask for that. They just asked the jury to decide what they thought was an appropriate punishment, given what had occurred, and that they sort of left it up to the jury. And the range could have been anywhere from 20 to 50 years or life. And ultimately, the jury decided that uh, he deserved to go to prison for the rest of his life. Well, maybe he'll make some new friends in there. No doubt. Um, but I do think he's probably not going to get, uh, you know, Father of the Year award. So, uh, And some other folks might find some good uses for those deep eye sockets of his. Right. So uh, you got a case you want to, what, what do you, you want to talk about next? Or well, looking things up, I don't remember the details, but I, there was something about a cake. Oh, you want to go up to Milwaukee where all the serial killers come from. Sorry if you're from there. That's just the way it is. Uh, there was a father in Milwaukee who was really upset when one of his kids 
ate his Father's Day cheesecake after he had only had one slice himself, which I don't know about you, Bob, but generally if there's a treat like that for me on Father's Day, if I get one slice, I feel pretty lucky. Yes, yes, and but I can see maybe just getting to the point where you've had enough, <laughs> you know? I mean, it's my, my damn Father's Day cheesecake. Yeah, I just want to enjoy the day. You've had 47 slices. I only got one. I was looking forward to that after choking down your mother's dinner. Well, you know, you and Travis Stackhouse have something in common then. Because this guy, and I mean, first of all, he looks like he could play uh, defensive end in the NFL. I mean, he's a big boy. Uh, he is not tiny at all. No, he can play anything he wants to play. <laughs> I'm not arguing with him. Right. So, I mean, this guy, he's a big fella. Um, and... In this case, like I said, we're in Milwaukee. He's he's got a number of kids. I think he has like four or five kids, and uh, one of them was a five-year-old. And I'm not sure that I have his name, um, but essentially, there was this evening back in uh, June 2019 where 911 was called to come out, and uh, it was this report to the first responders that this five-year-old had fallen down some stairs. Wait a minute, he killed the five-year-old? Killed the five-year-old. Holy shit. I thought you meant like a an adult grown son ate his cheesecake. A five-year-old? You can't. Uh, you, oh. Yeah. So first responders come out. They say, oh, yeah, he's like, you know, laying here basically dead because he fell down the stairs. And the first responders, just looking at what they see, are immediately like, that's not what happened here. And so ultimately, he admitted that he had punched his son in the stomach and had hit him in the face. Uh, and my understanding is he kind of hit him with the back of his hand. But again, this guy is, I think he's like 6'2", 6'5", 250. And I'll tell you how I found that out in a minute. Um, but he is a large man. You, um, you've been pen pal writing him letters, haven't you? <laughs> no, but I, I definitely don't want to be on his bad side. You got him to send you some of them, them pics they send around. <laughs> Uh, you're the only one around here with foot picks, Bob. <laughs> so he, he, my understanding is he, he punches this five-year-old in the stomach, which, you know, your average five-year-old's not very big. Um, and he backhanded him in the face. Uh, but his hand is probably like a bear paw and a five-year-old is, um, like I said, you know, just a five-year-old. Uh, one of the things that was really notable in this case to me, outside of the facts of it, was that during the sentencing, some of the comments the judge made. And this just really struck me. I, it really stood out to me. Quote, basically in Milwaukee County, basically in the city of Milwaukee, everybody shrugs their shoulders at homicides. No one cares. Occasionally, people actually care about child homicides because they're so awful and so heinous and just so gut-wrenching that occasionally the community, the people in Milwaukee County and others, actually care about homicides when children are killed. Wow. <laughs> and he said it in a way that wasn't like, I mean, he just said it like, yeah, you know, nobody here gives a crap about murder. It's just whatever. And when kids get murdered, sometimes people care. I thought, wow. So if you're in, if you're listening and you're in or near Milwaukee, like, is that true? Do you guys just not care about people getting murdered? And sometimes not when kids get murdered? Like, what is going on up there? I, it, it, I can't imagine that's representative of the sentiment of the entirety of Milwaukee. I sure hope. I, I hope not. But for a judge to say it from the bench i mean it was oh it was crazy um but yeah so this case uh oh, it was just really awful uh travis stackhouse had pled guilty uh in may of i believe it was 2021 to three felony charges these included second degree reckless homicide neglecting a child and child abuse intentionally causing harm and you know part of what was just terrible about i mean the whole thing is terrible right first of all you should never hit a child second of all um it, it's over f a piece of cake like are you serious i just it's it's insane to me the whole thing is insane to me i mean that guy i'm a fat ass you punch me if that guy punches me in the stomach my gut's gonna be wrapped around my spine twice and come out my asshole <laughs> i can't imagine him doing that to a, a little five-year-old kid Right. And, and Stackhouse, was it Stackhouse his yeah, name? Yeah, that's his last name. Ought to be Brickhouse. Wow, that's what, I mean, it's got a great prison name, and he's going to spend the next uh, 20 years there, because that's what the judge gave him. And Not, not enough. Uh, no, it really isn't. And and I, this case went to trial, and the uh, the state had put on most of its case, and then he decided to plead guilty. 
And so the judge cut him a little bit of a break for pleading and accepting responsibility or whatever, which I thought, you know, I mean, that's up to the judge. But if it were me, I, I don't know that you really deserve a break just because you realize that the 11th and, and the judge even said this is basically, you know, you pled at the 11th hour and 59th minute. But, uh, you know, he, had, he didn't really stay, save the state a whole lot at that point once you've already gotten that far. So, right. Especially when we knew your ass was guilty. I think what we ought to do is take him and lock him up in a trailer with angle grinder dad yeah well let me i mean <laughs> and see what happens well i can tell you i don't know what angle grinder dad looks like but my money's on this stack house dude now according to prosecutors like i said he was mad that his kid which his children which included his son and i think the son's name was sir amir that was his name that they were eating his cheesecake that he had recently gotten for father's day and he told police in this in this debrief that he had only gotten to eat one slice, which again, it, I mean, I feel like I'm lucky if something like that, I get a slice of it. But he admitted that he had struck his son's face with the back of his hand and said it was heavier than normal because of surgery. I don't know what that means. I guess he had had something and maybe there was pins or something. I, I, I don't know. But after he hit his son, this is the part that I think is just bananas. Uh, after he hits his five-year-old son, what does he do? What do you think he did? Do you think he just kind of watched him to see if he was going to be okay or, you know, kept an eye on him or uh, called a nanny? No, 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 no. He, I'm guessing this bag of shit got, a, got some cheesecake. Well, he went out to a bar with some friends until about two in the morning. Uh -huh. And when he came back, his girlfriend called 911 because, and, and the boy, this five-year-old boy was pronounced dead on at the scene by paramedics. The county medical examiner's office later determined that this five-year-old boy had suffered, to your point, about the damage that this inflicted. He had suffered a ruptured stomach, bruised kidneys, and a torn adrenal gland, and he died from blunt force trauma to the abdomen. Can you imagine? That's... What an awful way to die. That's horrible. Now, you had asked me if I found out about his um, height and weight through becoming a pen pal with him, and that's not the case. How I found it was when I just Googled this guy, and I'm pretty sure this is the same guy. Is it the same guy to you? Yeah. Same name, and it says that the county of conviction was in Wisconsin. Now, I'm on the Illinois State Police website uh, where he popped up. I believe it's him, so you know I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like the same guy, and says he lives in Wisconsin, so it kind of lines up. Uh, says this fella here was a registered sex offender due to um, a violent sex offense when he was 22 and the victim was 18. Specifically, apparently, it had been a criminal sexual assault with the use of force, which I think most of us would colloquially refer to as probably a rape. But that is where I found out that he is uh, 6'2", and I'm sorry, he's 205 pounds, not 250. <clears throat> yeah, he's stalky. But um, he a brick house. He is a big fella. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so he was sentenced. He had nothing to say during his sentencing. The hearing lasted probably about 20, 25 minutes. The judge pretty much told him he was terrible and horrible. And, and this is the judge that says everybody's cool with murder. Right, right, exactly. So that's, uh, that's, that's awful. So... Um, that's what we got in Milwaukee, the serial ca serial killer capital of the United States. Not really. I'm just, you know, that's where Dahmer was from. And there's a couple other guys that are pretty crazy up that way. So They like to take people apart up there. And this guy just, I mean, can you imagine dying from being hit hard in the stomach? Like, that has to be absolutely an awful, awful way to die. And for a five-year-old, I, I just can't even, I can't imagine. It's terrible. No, yeah, that's, ugh. I'm getting cr stomach cramps just thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we've been to Florida in Polk County. We've made our way to Lexington, Kentucky, where your favorite jelly comes from. And then we spent some time where old uh, serial killers are known for in Milwaukee. Uh, it only seems to make sense that we would end on the beach in Jersey, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Are we down the shore? You know, my knowledge of Jersey geography is <laughs> gym, gym tan laundry. That's all I know. So. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I think it's a it's a beachfront place somewhere, and yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there's lots of shoreline, so couldn't tell you. And this one's a little different in that the dad wasn't the evildoer, right? That is true. This one, uh, I thought you were going to talk about it, but I, I guess I'll, I'll make it happen. So yeah, we're looking at an article here that deals with a dad who, instead of doing the killing, got, got killed, got murdered. And um, 
You know, it's interesting. People get really weird when it comes to inheritances and wills and end of life stuff. And that's exactly what we have here because the victim in this case, the father, uh, John Jack Enders, was 87. Uh, and he was at his New Jersey beach house with his girlfriend, uh, Francois. Is that how you say that? My man, 87 years old, he got a girl for a French girlfriend and a beach house. He doing all right. Well, her nickname was Frenchy, which I, I don't, I mean, maybe she's French. Maybe that's, I would, I don't know. So she's 75. So she's also, what, uh, 12 years his junior. So, I mean. Go get it, Gramps. <laughs> he's got the beach house. Right. He's living his best life. But you know what? His daughter was not having it. Um, Sherry Lee Heffernan. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, she was 57. And uh, basically, she was not happy about this new girlfriend. Not happy about uh, the fact that she was being cut out of her father's will. And um, so she decided to cut him up. But not uh, not until she would shoot him and his girlfriend first. And my understanding is that she actually shot each of them in the mouth, but they didn't die, and then proceeded to stab them repeatedly. I believe, I'm trying to find the exact number here, she stabbed her father 51 times and then stabbed his girlfriend 39 times. So she shot him in the mouth. I Okay, I remember something about she shot him in the mouth. She didn't just shoot him to kill him. She intentionally like wanted them to suffer while she was stabbing them. That's exactly right. Yeah, so she, she shot him to just like shoot him, but then wanted to, yeah, wanted them to still be alive while she stabbed them to death. Pretty, uh, it's awful. That's very sick and twisted. Yeah, I, I mean... The sick and twisted aside, just from a, a practical perspective, this is just way too much work. Well, right. Ta speaking about a lot of work, right? The Asbury Park Press reported that she had put her father in a recliner and stabbed him again and again while staring at him face to face. That's some sicko mad. I mean, That's a woman scorned right there. This is taking Lizzie Borden to a whole other level. Right. She wants to be face to face. Shoot you in the mouth and stab you. And why does she kill Frenchie? What Frenchie do to her? Well, she's a gold digger, uh, in air quotes, that's, uh, uh, you know, lured her dad away, I suppose. Um, that or she was just there. I don't know. But uh, any, uh, oh, I was going to ask you, any idea how they caught, um, what's this woman's name? I can't even remember. It doesn't matter. But any idea how they caught Sherry? No, I don't, I, no. I this don't was my favorite part of the story was how they, they figured out that it was her, right? I mean, obviously they're going to be looking for people with motive, but in the early morning hours, there was surveillance footage from the neighborhood that showed somebody jumping over a fence, entering the home and leaving the home. And then they were able to use different footage that showed somebody driving a large RV to the area at the time of the murders. And they were able to figure out that it was her RV that she drove to this neighborhood and then jumped a fence and went in and yeah, killed no, him. That's an inconspicuous, like a big old RV, don't know, cousin Eddie. Right. I mean, talk <laughs> rolling about into the neighborhood. <laughs> it's just, I just imagine like, oh, I'm going to go commit a crazy murder. What's the least conspicuous vehicle I can <laughs> Right. Take? Should I take the Miata mm. or the 40 footer? Right. Yeah. Wow. So. And, uh, and it's, it's in. I mean, too much work and inefficient. Why didn't she just forge a will? I mean, seriously. And and wait, he's 87. I mean, I think it's fair to say she was not uh, thinking clearly or, or, you know, in the right frame of mind at all. It wasn't about the money. She was mad. Well, She the, was mad, mad. You don't stab someone 51 times. So, so this chick, Sherry, she was a realtor, which, you know, you've been there. And she wanted to list this beach home that they were in for sale. The home ultimately sold after these murders for $1.7 million in 2022. I see. She was ultimately taken into custody uh, by Pennsylvania State Police, where she lived in this place called Landenburg, Pennsylvania, uh, a day after police performed a welfare check at her dad's house because the girlfriend's relatives were unable to get a hold of her. So daddy wouldn't let her be the listing agent when he was selling the house, and he cut her out of the will. Well, no, I think he didn't even, he didn't want to sell it at all, was my understanding. Like, like it got sold after he was dead. Oh, I see, I see. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So she was like, hey, let me, let me sell the house. You should sell the house. And he's like, no, I'm enjoying um, hanging out at my beach house with my girlfriend that's 12 years younger than me. I'm not selling it. And then she was like, 
okay, well, this is going to happen to you. And so now she gets to spend the rest of her life in prison because she was uh, sentenced to life in prison. Oh, I hope they don't let her have kitchen duty. Mm, I, I would not trust that woman with a knife, that's for sure. So, um, wow, talk about some eventful father relationships. I don't even know what to make out of all that. You got any you got any thoughts about Father's Day and all this <clears throat> nonsense? What's interesting is that this is a smaller amount than the than the horrible mothers that I've seen in the crime news lately. The cases of the things mothers have done has been just shocking and abundant. So when we're looking at this for Father's Day and we wanted to you know, cases that involve dads, they were a little harder to find than the mom cases. That's true. And we dropped the ball. You know, we had an opportunity to do, you know, like a Mother's Day episode with some, you know, crazy going both ways. Moms, moms murdering and murdering moms. But yeah, we just kind of missed that opportunity. And then we realized, hey, we should do Father's Day. So next year for Mother's Day, we'll just have to make that like an extra long episode. Because I know, like you said, lately, there's been a lot of stories and cases and things that are not great uh and i can think of a bunch off the top of right. my head so my mom's have been getting wild <laughs> yeah. so you got off the hook this year but next year moms we're coming for you yeah a little double dose and i think you know i don't know how you feel but next year for father's day i think it could be interesting to talk about the um father's day bank massacre out of denver colorado all right. I mean, bank, massacre, Father's Day, I, I, it's got it all right there in the title. Yeah. But before we go today, can we ask our listeners to do something for us? I, I'm always happy to ask our listeners to do something. Well, and it's really for them, too. I mean, this is a, like a public service safety thing that we, we need to put out there. Make sure your life insurance is paid up? Well, no. Because, I mean, what do we benefit from that? But That's true. That's true. I don't get shit out of it. I don't <laughs> care. You know, whatever. No, what I want them to do is... It, they're on Apple. They're on Spotify. I want them to go hit that like and rating button on the five stars and make sure they leave their fingerprint on that button. That way, if they're ever abducted or anything, we'll be able to find them. That's that's a good point. And listen, you know, if anything happened to you, if we know, if you've left us a review or you've reached out to us on social, uh, we would absolutely cover your case on our podcast. So we'll, we'll, we'll take good care of you. <laughs> right. Oh, you got your, what is that, your squid pro quotums? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. You're laughing at yourself. <laughs> Those are so damn dumb. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, seriously, folks. Yeah, we appreciate all you listeners. And hey, you, while you're at it, tell your friends. You got friends that like true crime. Everybody likes murder. So tell somebody. <laughs> Hey, thanks for hanging out with us on the Brothers in Crime podcast. Feedback and suggestions are always welcome. For links and resources related to this episode, please see the show notes or visit us at brothersincrimepodcast.com. We hope you'll save, subscribe, or bookmark us on your favorite podcast site and join us for the next episode.